Welcome to a War Game Review with theplayersaid.com. I'm Grant. And I'm Alexander. We played a Euro-based war game today from Academy Games called 1812, The Invasion of Canada. In fact, this is the 200th anniversary edition of the War of 1812. So, what year does that make it, Alexander? This came out in 2012. 2012. The game is designed by Bo Beckett and Jeff Stahl and is in the Birth of America series. There is a game, there's actually three games in that series. 1775, which is the American Revolution. 1754, which is the French and Indian War. And that game came out... Is that the latest 2016, one? I believe. And, and this game came out in 2012. And they just, so they did them. And they put out a Viking game... Right, last this, year. This same system, but not yeah. part of the Birth of America series, obviously. Right. But it's a very popular system. Yeah, they put out mm -hmm. four games in it. It is a very palatable war game. Anyone yeah. can play this. You right. Know, it's, this is this is you put this with kind of axis and allies, right? Well, but step up from risk, but you know yeah. similar similar, but very easy to play. Right. And I, I thought that was great. Like we played the whole campaign, took a couple hours at most. Yeah, yeah. I think we played two hours. We played six turns of an eight turn game and ended in a victory for the British, Canadians, and the Native Americans for Alexander. Who hoorah! All right, right. You won. Very, it was very, very it was close. Very tight very game. Very close. Um, but once again, Euro-based war game. Uh, you, you can see it uses wooden cubes, control markers, and then specific dice for each faction. One of the things I really enjoy about it is each of the factions are definitely asymmetric. The British only ever roll two dice, even if they have ten units in a space. I don't think we ever saw more than three or four. Yeah. Um, but their dice are, are very powerful. Their dice have, well, three hits on six sides and have no flea results, which flea is bad. Actually, it's not that bad. Sometimes it's good. Yeah. You just run into the fled units pool and then later you can, once those units are reorganized, their morale is improved, they're fed a hot lunch, they're shoved right back out in, into the war. But the British regulars, the American regulars, their dice are pretty much the same. And then you have the step-down militia, the American militia, the Canadian militia, and, and the Native American units as well. The Native Americans. So all of those dice are different. The Canadian militia, I believe, have probably the same makeup as the American militia. They have, I think it's two hits on each dice. These have two hits and two fleas. And two fleas. And then they have blank sides, which when a blank side comes up, the opponent, or I'm sorry, the player who rolled them for their, their faction has the ability to make a choice about whether those units strategically relocate to an adjacent, friendly controlled area. The only difference in that is the Native Americans. They can relocate to a non-friendly area. So yeah, the, the once again, the, the dice are different. I think that's a very neat element, and I really think it made you think about how best to use certain units. Yeah, I was, <laughs> sounds terrible, I was more willing to give up certain units because right. they provided weaker dice. And it sounds kind of, kind of a callous decision making process, but then, you know, if you've got large groups, you're balancing of, I'd rather have the maximum number of dice, so I'm going to kill off maybe some of my better units to keep me from, so I can roll more dice, even with my weaker units, because you always right. want to roll more dice. So th there's really cool decision making in the combats, but it's dudes on a map. It's you know it, this is it's North America or the northern part of America mm -hmm. and and the, the Great Lakes region. Yeah, and it's divided up into regions. Beautiful map. Yeah, very yeah, very well done. And you're just moving guys around. You, it's a card-driven game, so you just you know it tells you move these move this amount of guys, this amount of spaces. You do it, and then you resolve the combat, which is just a dice off. So you will throw a lot of dice in this game. Mm -hmm. So. There's a lot of randomness to it, but the strategy is in how you compose your armies, where you move them, and then the terms on which you fight your battles. Right. If you fight on home turf, if it doesn't matter if you're attacking or defending, you'll always you roll first. first, and then you, you assess the hits, and then whatever's left gets to shoot back at you. So when you start you know, going into the enemy's areas, 
they might only have a couple guys, but they're gonna roll that dice first, and that can really, you know, that can really hurt you if you mm-hmm. start losing a couple guys and then you chuck nothing, and you're like, oh, what yeah. I thought was a cakewalk is now something very difficult. Right, and that played out several times where I maybe only had three or four units, and I would roll three hits out of those four units, and you're, you could see your numbers starting to wither, yeah, like, and all of a sudden you went from rolling five dice to rolling only, say, two or three. And that's a big, big difference. And then, and then you get into, I want to roll those misses so I can command decision them back out. <laughs> right. Like, retreat. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Then, so it's really cool the way yeah. the dice work. It's not just, I'm trying to roll sixes. Right. Like doing other games. No, it's, it's a very neat dice system. It is kind of like risk in the respect you roll the number of dice based on the number of units that you have. So if you have, say, British regulars... As long as you have two British regulars in the battle, you're going to roll both your dice. The moment you lose one of your British regulars, you're going to lose a die. So with, with American Militia, if you have at least three, you're going to roll three dice. The same with Canadian Militia and with, uh, with the Native Americans. You'll never roll more than this. If no. I've got six guys, I you don't just roll, roll three, three dice. Yeah. The maximum is the two or the three. And I think that's really cool. That's kind of the way risk works. You know, if you have... Three guys, you roll yeah. three dice. If you have two guys, you only roll two dice. So, um, lots of neat mechanics. I, what was the part that you liked the best about the game? I just liked how simple it was. Mm-hmm. The objectives are very straightforward. I am trying to capture more of the objective cities than you are. Right. So, it's really easy. I have a hand of three cards. I've got to play at least one movement card, and then I could play a special one if I wanted to. And it's, it's just straightforward. I know exactly what I'm trying to do. Like, we read the rules. It's, what, 10 pages? 10, 12 pages. 12 pages. Pretty simple. Straightforward. And, and a significant amount of this rule book, which is excellent. So there's three or four pages of history, so you can skip that if yep. you want to, to get actually playing. Really, there's only actually six pages of rules. And, and like, probably a third of that is examples, which is very, very good. And mm-hmm. Academy Games do great rule books in that way. But you just, you pick it up and you play it. It's, right. it's very intuitive as to what you should be doing. Yeah. Moving in, capturing cities, I do it with, this tells me how many guys I move, how many spaces. Yeah. It was so Pretty simple. simple. And the part that I really liked on top of all this was how the game ends, which is each faction in their small deck of cards has this truce card. And f- yep. to trigger the end game, each kind of, each... Faction and the Alliance. Each faction and the so Alliance. So the American Alliance both have to be played to end the game. In the British, Canadian, Native American Alliance, all three have to be played to trigger that game end. And it was, you know, after the third turn, once either Alliance has played all of their truce cards, which can happen very quickly, you'll trigger game end at the end of that round. Mm-hmm. And it'll end in a victory for either side or a tie uh, if you don't do well enough. Yeah. And so... But having those cards, you, it's random when they come up. You might not draw yours for ages, so you can't end the game. But if right. you do, you can cling on to those, and you've got a choice about when you end the game. And you might say, I'll put one out, and then it's a case of wait until you maybe have the last turn in a round with yep. the other little faction, and you're like, oh, I strategically take something, and I'm going to end the game. Yeah. Which can be a little bit corny <laughs> if you're just like, Ugh, it's over, great. Yeah. But... There's, but you've got to be aware of that. You yeah. you have to be aware that that's an option. I liked that. I, yes. I call it uh, hawkeyeing. You're you're kind of watching the the field as it plays out, counting control markers, and hoping that you come up last in the faction order, which is a random draw. You take these faction cubes, which we initially thought, oh, those are dice that <laughs> were not punched right, but. I should have known that because I played 878 Vikings and they, they have the, the same, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, you put these in a draw bag and aside from the first turn, during the first turn, the the uh, American regulars get to go first, always. But what you're going to do is you're going, you're going to draw one of these cubes out. I drew the white cube, which is the American militia. You're going to put it here in the first place. And the cool thing is you don't draw the remaining four cubes so it continually is a mystery about who's going to go next. Yeah. So, you know, I take my actions, I play my movement card. On top of that, I can play up to two special cards. Special cards are like events. They 
sometimes give you extra reinforcements, help you move a little bit more that round, give you extra die rolls in battle or better rolls in battle. So you play those and then your turn's over. Then guess what? You draw the next cube. Oh, it's the Native Americans. Then you put that there and you play it out. So with two cubes on the board, you still know that there's two times for the British Alliance to go as the Canadians and the British regulars, and the Americans only have one more turn as the regulars. So you're watching that the whole time, trying to figure out when you're gonna strike with that second treaty card or truce card to try and end the game if you are in a position to yeah. win the game. You wanna be able to do that, like, yeah. take, a, take a city and then, and then kind of get the game ended. Right. And that's just, that's really fun and it keeps the game tense. It makes it desperate and tense. It really yeah. does. So you, it forces you to do things that you would not strategically normally do. No, no. Like, just, I left myself wide open yeah. at the end of the game in a gambit to take over. I needed to take over four territories, taking three back from you, and then capturing another additional territory to try and win the game. I succeeded in everything, but one of your guys snuck through my lines with a command decision role and a Native American can run through the lines and kind of go into an enemy territory as long as it's not occupied yeah. by units. It, and it, that, it was my mis- that was my mistake. I should have left. I had plenty of dudes here. I should have left a regular there. And But the initiative versus the kind of the end game stuff is it, it keeps it yeah. keeps you locked into this game. Oh yeah, you can't you can't just forget about that, right? Because otherwise you'll get pounced on. Yeah, like their little switch and they'll drop it on you. Like, ugh. Mm-hmm. you you know, it's not just like oh I lost the match. Like you lost the game. Like it's yeah. over. And I think that's really really neat. Uh, so what we'll do, I think we'll take a quick look at the board and then we'll just wrap up with a few final thoughts. Yep. So I couldn't actually get everything uh, in the shot. It's just it's a very long kind of thin board and that's just because it's you know it's the Great Lakes regions you got um, north part of America as you can see it's got Pennsylvania and Ohio and then you've got the southern tips of uh, regions of Canada um, you can see it's divided red and blue this is the British faction Canadian faction up here and then you've got the Americans down here um, they have white militia cubes for the US or for America and then they've got blue regulars, those are enlisted troops. And then for the uh, British Alliance, you've got British regulars, these green cubes are the Native Americans, and the yellow uh, are the Canadian militia. Each faction has their own little deck of cards. It's only, I think it's 12 cards in their deck. And then it's got the uh, regulars here, and then there's ones for, for the British faction as well. Basically, you draw a hand of cards, and you look at them, oh, let's get some here just to show you obviously I can't find any good ones all right here we go so basically a typical hand is gonna look something like this and on your turn you have to play a movement card it can be normal movement which looks like this and you've got like six of these in your deck or it could also be a, a over water movement these guys use fisher boats to, to move across the lakes and then you could optionally play a couple of special cards if you have them and if you want to you don't have to so typically you're going to be playing one or two cards at most each turn and I was worried that we'd go through the deck of 12 cards because it's in an eight turn game and you can technically play three cards in a turn but that was not the case we played through six turns and everyone had at least three or four cards in their deck left so that was a surprise but a welcome one to be sure so very simply the card tells you what to do this says move four armies one space each some of them different this one says for example move two armies three spaces each so you know there's decisions to be made movement is obviously by region you see everything's kind of divided up here now the nice thing is if i'm the american militia i can activate all armies that include white cubes so for example this army up here that's consists of white and blue cubes, I can move that whole army. So they could move, for example, in this one, they could move three spaces. So these guys are gonna kinda go on a rampage. They can move up here, and then they can move in here as well. You can keep doing that, and then my, the second army that's gonna move three spaces, they're gonna go one, two, three. Again, very simple how everything moves. Um, 
combat resolution is kind of where the fun fun begins. For example, if you've got these guys here, let's bring in kind of a nice attacking force. Just to see what we can roll up here. And we'll give them another Native American. So if this is what you are going with, these guys move in here. It doesn't matter who initiates the combat in this instance. Whoever, uh, whichever color the province is, that's the person who rolls first. You're fighting on home turf, you gain that advantage. So I count up how many guys I've got here, and that's how many dice I'm going to roll, basically. So we've got one red dude. It looks like there's two green guys and two yellow guys. And I just chuck these and see what happens. I'm looking for hits is what I would ideally like. And I did fantastic. So these hits are applied before, there's no kind of firing back. You lose guys before that happens. So we're gonna apply three hits to the US. And the US gets to, the American player gets to choose who gets removed. So they're gonna remove a blue guy so that they can still roll two blue dice and they're gonna roll a white guy and another white guy because the white dice aren't as good. So these guys are dead, they're off the board. Now the other things that I rolled, one of my Canadians has to flee. So they get removed from here and they go down into this fled units box and they'll come back next turn onto the board. And then optionally, I can move any one unit back, but I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I want, kinda wanna stick with what I've got here because I think I'm gonna do pretty well. So now, the US player is gonna roll. They're gonna roll two white dice, two blue dice. Very simply, they can do the same thing. And they roll two hits. So we're gonna remove, uh, we'll remove the yellow guy and a green guy. Those guys are dead. One of the militia flees, so he goes to the fled box. And I have the option to move a guy out if I wanted to, but they're kind of on the ascendancy, so they're not gonna do that. And then it goes, it goes back, you go back and forth until someone's not in the space anymore. So the British Alliance roll, they miss. So this is an opportunity where you might say, I'm going to sit here and get killed, or I could strategically withdraw. So they're going to withdraw to an adjacent space that's kind of friendly or vacant, so they're going to re retreat back here. And that's the end. The American player then now takes control of this of this uh, Fort George, which is a victory point, basically. So, victory, that was a successful combat for the Americans. And, and that's honestly how the game goes. It's very, very simple in that way. Now, you can enhance um, your attacks or moves, do special actions, like this is adding two American militia units to one American homeland objective area, even if enemy occupied. So you just play, you know, you do your moves, you can play a special card as well. So you play this, and then you just pop up two guys here and they can now, def you know, just as a, as a reinforcement. Or I could stick them in here. And now we're gonna do a combat here, for example. So there's, there's really cool things you do, or I can put it here because this was free pickings if they moved in there. But that's it. Um, the other interesting thing we talked about here was the, was the truce mechanic. These are the truce cards. Then like a normal movement card, you got four moves, and they can move two spaces each. It's kind of each one of those. And I think the uh, the allied ones here. So this guy's got two moves, three spaces each. The Native Americans will notice, typically speaking, if you play this, they have much better movement. They can move further. They can move fewer armies, but they can move them further, which is cool. Just a bit of theme there. And these guys, three and two. But that's those are the cards. You play that, you do that action, and then it goes off to the side of the board here. And once all of your factions, ones are out, then you, that triggers the end game at the end of that round. So only play the last one of those when you know or think you can win. But that, that's the game. It's, it's honestly, it's that simple. You, uh, you draw little um, initiative cubes from a, from a blind bag to determine turn order. And you do that as you go. So you pull the red cube, red cube goes. Then you pull another cube. So you don't know who's going to go, so you get that blind element to it. But really, it's very simple in that way. You play your cards, you move, you fight, and that's it. So that was a quick look uh, at the board. We showed you some of the some of the pieces, how they move, how they fight, um, and really, once again, entry level, Euro based war game.
Yeah. So don't go into this if you're a counter pusher looking for a seven hour game. You're not going to get that from this. No. You will get some of the combat strategy and tense decision making, but you won't necessarily get the, the full effect of a true deep war game, which I think is okay. This is a light game. We played it in about two hours. It can be played probably yeah. as quick as 90 minutes. This is the kind of game that you play with your teenage kids. Right. Um, or, kind of a family-oriented war game. Or if you want to just like take a step back. Right. Like, we played this. I had a blast. I would play yeah. this again. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it's it, it just was fun. fun. It's fun. And, and I think a lot of times we talk... We love deep mechanics, we love strategy, we love things like supply and looking for the weak areas. But man, th these kind of games, there's just real quick and dirty strategy. Yeah. And it's like, you just gotta put it together, play the game well, and sometimes it comes and, down to dice and, and, and some luck. And that's okay. But it's, you that's know, okay. it's stripped down so it's really accessible. Right. And there's a, you know, I wanna play some of the other ones in this series because they're just, yep. oh, this was a blast, it was fun to play. And that's a credit, and I think uh, Academy Games do a great job with this. Yes. We've played a few of their games now, and it's, they're always, at least the ones that I've played, the game's always very playable and always right. very fun. Well, I've played 878 Vikings. We've played Mara Nostrum, which we think is a great game. It is a game made for five players, though. I mean, that game is not a game that we've enjoyed when we played just two. No, yeah, that one, it, that one rewards multiplayer. Yeah. So we love that one. I played 1775, now this one. We played Conflict of Heroes, which Conflict is, which is Heroes. a real war game by then. Yep. Um, but, but, so I just, I'm always impressed with mm -hmm. the variation in the designs of the games that they do. Like they've, they covered so many different things. And then this is just, I don't know, I had a blast. Yeah. I, I, that's that's what I'm saying. It's it's fun. Yeah, I had a great time playing, and it's easy to learn. Yeah, I think this is one of those war games that I would put in that category of it's a good value. You're not going to pay eighty bucks for this. You're going to pay fifty or sixty, I think, in a brand new copy. Great production value. Very interesting and engaging mechanics. And the reality is, there's tough decisions, and there's some tense. There's some tense times. It's it, there was some nail biting going on. And yeah, it, it, you know, it's fun. battles where we were just rolling blanks over yeah. and over again. I, I think we rolled one time. We had a Native American and a militia, and just, I think we rolled three or four blanks a piece, which meant nothing. And neither neither of us wanted if, to leave the. But area. if I'd have won, the game would have. I would have immediately won the game. Right. True. So like yep. it's it like it, it, it was like. <gasps> yeah, it was crazy. Just it so was crazy. You get that randomness to it. It's yeah. awesome. But the game rewards you for kind of doing a bit of crazy things, putting yourself out there, hopefully right. some things go your way. Right. So we're going we're gonna to finish up our review here, but I'm, I'm going to do some uh, action points because I want you to understand some of the really cool mechanics. We'll post those, we'll put this video up, and then we may do a more in-depth uh, written review. But once again, Birth of America series, I really like this. I think Academy Games does a great job. And w once again, we enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, we this, had fun. This game is readily available. Yep. You can buy it brand new. There's a ton on the aftermarket as well. Uh, so I recommend picking this up. You, you could bring it out with almost anyone. I yeah, think that's, yeah. that's a credit. You could pull, play this with virtually anyone. And it's going to take you a couple rounds to pick it up. But once you get it, you're you're going to be into it. And and I think this is a game that you're going to want to play again and again. I really do. Yes. So, because each outcome is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, either some rolls so, didn't go your yep. way, like, I got to do it again. Or the cards didn't come out the way you yeah. wanted them. So there's going to be some variety in the way I think that the game turns out from play to play. So once again, that's been 1812, The Invasion of Canada from Academy Games. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid. And I've been Alexander. Thank you.